All right, so uh, I should go back to your third equation. Going back to the equation, the percent change in the House seats for the President's party was negative 6.71 minus 1.00 times the unemployment rate. So if you notice that, my slope is zero. Uh, slope is negative. Not zero, but negative. So anyway, there is a negative slope on the line. However, this slope and the y-intercept are only estimates of the parameter values. We haven't looked at every single possible election, past, present, and future. We had just basically a sample. So we might wonder if this is convincing evidence that the true linear model has a negative slope. So that is our null hypothesis here is whether slope is equal to zero. Your beta one is is essentially the um, the parameter that goes with slope. So beta one equals zero means that the true linear model has slope zero. And interpretation of that would be basically that unemployment rate has nothing to do with um, the president's gains or losses. The other one is that beta one is less than zero. That's our, that's our research hypothesis. The true linear model has a slope less than zero. The higher the unemployment rate, uh, the greater the losses for the president's party and the House of Representatives. Now, in terms of which hypothesis is uh, more accurate, well, let's look at the data. So, just like any other point estimates we have seen before, we can compute the standard error and test statistic for B1. That's the point estimate for slope. Uh, we will usually label the test statistic using a T since we're dealing with a T distribution. Uh, on the other hand, we're not going to be computing, we're not actually going to compute the standard error. Computers are going to do it for us. So we will rely on statistical output uh, to compute the standard error and leave the explanation of how the standard error is determined for a second or third statistics course. So, in terms of the results, generally you're going to see output like this. So, the table here shows the software output for the least squares regression line. Uh, the top row, the intercept, that's basically all the information you need in terms of the y-intercept. The one below that, unimp, that basically deals with the slope. Uh, I don't actually say slope, but I give the name of the variable for that, and that will come become a little bit more uh, apparent with the next lessons with uh, when we deal with multiple regression, and we have multiple x values. Um, for right now, instead of saying slope, we'll actually describe what the variable is, so un unemployment. Well, anyway, we can write the equation by just reading down that first column. Those are the point estimates. So I could say that uh, the change, the percent change, is negative 6.71 minus 1.00 times the unemployment rate. And we get that by just reading that first column. The next column is the standard error, and again, those will be given to you, uh, those will just be given for you. They're real pain in the to compute. Uh, the next column would be the test statistics and p-value. Now, in terms of we need to be cautious about is um, exactly what we're doing the test statistics and p-values for. So, these numbers, well, let's start with the first row. So. These two numbers here, these are for the null hypothesis where beta 0 is equal to 0 versus uh, alternative of beta 0 not equal to 0. So this is basically the two-sided test where we're testing whether the intercept is 0 or not. Uh, my p-value is 0.23, so that means that I would fail to reject it's plausible that the intercept is really zero. 
Uh, we had an estimate as negative 6.7, but my standard error is large enough that, um, yeah, maybe the unemployment rate, uh, maybe this change really, really was zero. So if the unemployment rate was zero, maybe the percent change would have been zero as well. The next line, and that's really the more important one for us, that deals with the slope. So the null hypothesis is where beta 1 is equal to zero versus beta 1 not equal to zero. So both of these are testing whether the, whether, both of these are testing two-sided hypotheses. So we're looking at the greater than zero or less than zero. We're looking at not equal to. <clears throat> and in this case, you can see the p-value, 0.2617. So it's plausible the slope is zero. All right, so kind of spelling it out. Uh, in terms of the test statistic, so let me go back to the table here. This number is negative 1.15. What that comes from is you can read off the estimate of standard error. Um, take that negative 1.0010. Since my null hypothesis is that beta 0 equals 0, so my null value is 0, I would subtract 0, divide by 0 0.8717. Put that in your calculator. Yeah, might as well. Negative 1.0010 minus 0 divide by 0.8717 and we know with negative 1.15. We have the test statistic. Now, where the other number comes into play, well, so in terms of the graph, negative 1.15 is over here, no value 0. We want the p-value is basically all this area here and the area on the other side. So the way you find the p-value would be tcdf negative 999 to negative 1.15, 25 degrees of freedom, you can see on the table, and then times 2. Put that in your calculator. So second, vars, choose tcdf. So, okay, usually default, the negative 1E99, that's basically negative 50. Um, I'll go negative 1.15, 25 degrees of freedom, paste, times 2. And you see we end up with 0.261, well, we got 0.2610. That's because the negative 1.15 was kind of, we rounded more than the computer did. So the computer's 0.2617 is technically more accurate. But, you know, within rounding, we got the same answer. <coughs> so, again, okay. test statistic. Um, we find a test statistic by doing estimate minus null value for standard error, negative 1.00 minus uh, 1, negative 1 1.0010 minus 0 over 0.8717. See, negative 1.15. Uh, the p-value comes from doing the TCDF. Um, take the negative 999 to negative 1.15, 25 degrees of freedom times 2. And we essentially, within rounding, we get the same answer. Now, there's one caution. Uh, we started out originally and wanted to do an alternative of beta 1 less than 0. Now, this one is for beta 1 not equal to 0. So, that's the two-sided. We actually wanted the one-sided test. So, as far as pictures goes, what I'm saying is that if I add these two areas combined, make up 0.2617, we are really only interested in the less than part, so we're really only interested in this side. 
So the way we deal with that is we could find this, we can get their actual p-value for this particular test by dividing by 2. So 0.13085. Now uh, we would still fail to reject, so it doesn't really change anything. But what we have here is that we have no evidence that unemployment rate has any effect in terms of the president's party. Um, looking at the graph, it looked like the president's party is going to lose um, lose people, um, lose members of the house, whether their unemployment rate is high or low. All right, suppose that for whatever reason, we want to test the hypothesis that beta 1 is equal to negative 1 versus not equal to negative 1. Well, if we're doing something that's not 0, we need to recompute the last two numbers. So let's start off with my new test statistic. So I'll have to redo these. My new one would be point estimate, so negative 1.0010 minus my null value divided by the standard error, 0.8717. So, good idea to use parentheses, negative 1.0010, and then minus a negative is plus, so plus 1, parentheses, divide by 0.8717. Enter. And my new point statistic, uh, my new test statistic is negative 0.001147. So graphically, that would be over here. We want everything away from the center, and then I'm both, since it's not equal to, I want both sides. So the p value, the TCDF, negative 999 comma negative 0.001147 comma 25 degrees of freedom times 2. Okay. So second FARS um, TCDF so negative 0.001147 Put it as freedom paste times two, and we have a p value of 0.999. That's about as large as a p value as you're ever going to see. We have absolutely no evidence that the slope is not negative one. All right, so let's create a 95% confidence interval for the slope. All right, so we have our point estimate. We have our standard error. Um, I guess the main thing we're missing is our confidence, confidence coefficient. So we need to figure out what T star is first. We want 95% and we have 25 degrees of freedom. So what, what we can do is pull out the, conf, uh, the T distribution table. There it is. Go down to 25 degrees of freedom in 95%, and you can see we end up with 2.06. So here it is right there. So 2.06. Okay. So my 95% confidence interval is negative 1.0010, you know, point estimate, plus or minus 2.06 times the standard error. So my 95% confidence interval, we'll see. Negative 1.0010, I guess I really don't need the last zero, but uh, minus 2.06 times 0.8717, got that. A uh, little trick, if you go second and then hit entry, you get the, get the numbers again. So I can just change that, change this number here, oops, that one to a plus, hit enter, <clears throat> there you go. 
So we end up about negative 2.80 up until 0.79, so 0 0.79. So essentially the slope could have been anything from negative 3 up to about negative 2.8 up to about positive 0.79 so based on our sample it's plausible that we could have had a that higher unemployment rate could have led to the president doing even better probably not but um, essentially anything inside that region is plausible and the region the reason it's such a big um, such a big range here is because the data wasn't all that great you know the numbers were all the, the values were all over the place so it wasn't all that great, and so that's why we have this big range that, uh, you know, my previous example, we showed that it could have been zero. We showed it could have been negative one. We actually could have showed that the slope could have been negative two. We could have showed that the slope was positive, 0.79. So, anyway, this is just an indication that uh, it wasn't very great data. So, last thing I want to mention is here is the Great Depression. The, here I included the Great Depression for, uh, I guess, the graphs on the right. Uh, data for the Great Depression were removed because the unemployment rate was 21% and 18% respectively. Do you agree that this should have been removed? Well, if you know, so here is, uh, these are the two outliers. Notice that if you include it, our slope actually becomes positive that the president actually does better if uh, the unemployment rate is high. Okay, doesn't make a lot of sense. But anyway, in terms of why they were um, removed, it's because they don't add anything. There's there's nothing in any uh, any recent um, year that even comes remotely close to those uh, to those numbers. So they didn't really apply. So in order to be relevant, we just looked at data without, but. Either way, we end up failing to reject, so either way, we, uh, um, what was I going to say, uh, either way, there's no evidence that the slope was, uh, was negative. So, I want to say in terms of uh, caution. The last column in regression output often lists uh, p-values for one particular hypothesis, and that's the two-sided test where the null value is zero. Um, if your test is one-sided and the point estimate is in the direction of the alternative, then what you do is you can cut the p-value in half like we just did. Otherwise, be very cautious about using the software output. You might need to redo it.